Yo, what's up guys? Today we are reacting to this video, which talks about Svalbard, Norway. How expensive is it to live in this place? Um, so, how much does it cost to live in Svalbard? If you're new to the channel, don't forget to like and subscribe. This is going to be a, a short documentary, I think, because it's a 25 minute long video. But hey, let's learn about Svalbard, Norway. fireplace i know what you guys are gonna say most of them are right but you know we have Welcome electric back heating to svalbard everyone and happy new year i love the start happy of the new year new beginnings are my thing i've never had a problem with things coming to Ooh, an end because <laughs> the it dog means has the lights on it something new something exciting endless possibilities that's nice we are still in the darkness here on svalbard and i'm loving it it's peaceful and calming and i feel happy the sky has blessed us with endless northern lights lately, which and for stars. sure lights up our otherwise very dark days. But if there's something that the sky shows you in winter, is that there is nothing dark about the polar nights. See, these are the type of things that we overlook. Stars. How, how long has it been since you haven't seen stars? How long has it been? When was the last time you looked up? And you saw stars. I mean, you know, these things, I, I used to see stars all the time in the past, and I kind of miss that feeling, you know, just looking up and seeing like a constellation of stars and, well, it's a beautiful sky. Was that a falling star? That was a shooting star. No way. She actually caught a shooting star on video. Make a wish. Let me go back. That was nice. This is very soothing. This is almost ASMR. <laughs> the crackling. Cracking of the, the wood burning. Very peaceful. This is basically a vlog, right? This is more like a, a vlog. Imagine being stuck. Careful with that door. We've got lots of snow. Look. Ooh, it's time to air the sheets. Okay, maybe you should go inside. Oh no. Uh, maybe you should. <laughs> How cold does it get there in Svalbard? I like how natural her videos are. Hello, everyone. Hello. And welcome to the new year. <laughs> it's 2023. I'm sorry, but how? How is time just moving so fast? I don't know. 
Maybe I should move in a little bit closer. Okay, come here, come, come with me. This is a lot more cozy, isn't it? We're drinking coffee today. I love her camera of and her course. microphone. Okay, so the new year isn't the only exciting thing. Guess what? This channel, my channel, hit 500K subscribers. Congratulations. Just before the new year. Nice. And that is just so wild. I don't think I ever really imagined that this could happen, you know? So I just also wanted to say thank you for being here, for watching my videos and for hanging out on my channel. I love reading the comments. I love like the community that we made. Community? Mm -hmm. The community that we've created here. So just want to say thank you. It's exciting. So what better way to start the new year than with some budget control? <laughs> Budget control. This might sound like so boring, but I think it's... It's not boring. It's very important, very interesting, and I need to do it for myself. <laughs> this year is going to be wild. So important to have like a good idea of what your economy looks like. Is that what you say in English? Your finances look like is really good. And especially now for the new year and now that prices are kind of going up and everything feels Inflation. a little bit uncertain. She said economy, which is interesting because I think she's talking, uh, she's speaking like uh, with a Norwegian um, mentality, right? So where I come from, we also say economia, which is your finances. But the, the fact that these are similar words, you know, is interesting because in, in, in Norwegian, you can you, you kind of like refer to your finances as the, the economy, right? Interesting, interesting. I think now is better than ever to get like a good idea of what are your expenses? What should you be saving? And I'm just a novice in this. So if I can give you some tips on how to do it, since I'm just like a beginner, I thought, why not? And also a lot of people are very curious about what our lives cost us. And now I can tell you, since I did my last video, is it one year ago? Our life is so much more expensive. Uh -huh. This is gonna be good. We bought a boat. I was not expecting that. And that's not a boat. That's kind of like a, a, a private yacht. Okay. Bought a fucking boat. But it's we a mini yacht. This, so. We definitely knew that this is going to be a money just chomper. So we're going to have to... Uh, hear me out. When when you say boat, I kind of like imagine those rowboats. <laughs> redo the budget because every I don't year have I kind of look at rich it. Mentality and I'm like, yet. Okay, what needs changing? What oh. worked last year? So I'm going to be showing you exactly what our expenses are, which maybe can be helpful if you're thinking of moving here. We're just going to go through it and then... We'll see what it all looks like. And also I have not used like a proper, like professional template. I just went into Excel and I made the easiest thing that works for me. That works. I'm also kind of bad at like- Less is more. Sums and everything in Excel. So I usually do like an easy workaround. But you know what? As long as it works, it works. So let's get started on budget 2023. Okay. Uh, all right, let's see what we got here. But this is what I'm interested all, in. <laughs> let's see. Okay, step one. What's the my cost friends, of living? Is to find the other budget. All right, so first of all, we're going to do updated January 2023. And now, let's see. Okay, so our wages are now set at 40,000. Last year, I think we had them at 30 because that is what like the average uh, paycheck kind of is in Long Yubin. You would make 30,000 Norwegian kroners a month. A month okay 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 i was thinking wait how much is that in in pounds though just oh, let me just google that real quick so um norwegian kroner right norwegian krona to british pounds so that's forty thousand. that's three thousand that's the average three thousand three hundred pounds per month that's actually a very good salary you know, here for the UK, um, the average salary, let me see, average, average UK salary is 640. What? No, that's, oh, that's week. That's per week. 
Hmm. Is it? Really? Wow. <laughs> okay. Okay, I need to change my profession because teaching jobs aren't... <laughs> you know. Okay, so I think, yeah, 2,500 is the average salary in the UK. 2,500, I would guess. Just a quick little note here before we continue. Svalbard is governed by Norway, which means that we are under Norwegian law here on Svalbard. But we also have some specific Svalbard law that overrules that law. When it comes to income and taxes, we pay a lot less than on the mainland. Our income tax is That's 8%, nice. and then we have another 8% on top of that, which I don't really know what it's called, but it's like a communal tax. So our total taxes is 16%. And why wow. this is so low is because we don't have many of the things on the mainland that tax covers. You can live on Svalbard for as long as you can support yourself. If you can't support yourself, you must leave or the government will buy you a plane ticket to where you come from. We Okay, that means you're being deported. <laughs> We're going to buy you a plane ticket to go back to where you came from. That's called deporting. Um, here in the UK, the tax, the, the, the lowest bracket is 20%. Obviously, if you earn less than, I think, 12500 a year, then you don't pay tax. We also don't have any support for elders. We don't have any old people's homes. There's no communal transport and no special education at the school, etc. Yeah, so I think that's to incentivize people not to move there, especially because it's it's I, I I would say it's a hard place to live. I think anywhere that has snow and cold is hard to live in. In Norway also, which is the same as Sweden, you're paid monthly. I think in America you're paid weekly. Sounds wild to me. So we do monthly paychecks, which is also why it's kind of extra important to budget because you will get a chunk of money that you will need to you know not spend <laughs> but okay so and also why we're putting it at 40 now is because we're making a little bit more than we did last year which allows for us to have the boat and all of the things otherwise i don't think we would afford it so yeah. we're making around four thousand us dollars each okay i'm gonna have to change a little bit in this one so it's gonna look a bit weird for you but the way we have it set up is that i have a bunch of different accounts in our banks <laughs> Whoa. One, two, three, four, five, six. She's very well organized, I guess. So the way we have it is we have one, uh, one account where we just put money in for the bills so that we don't have to touch, we don't have to think about it. So that always has the right or a little bit more than it should have. So right now we're putting money in for in three months, the electricity ability to be paid. I, I prefer getting paid monthly, you know, going back to that weekly, monthly debate. Because monthly, you have the money, you know, and you can save it and you can organize your finances for you know, um, for what you need to, to pay throughout the, the whole month. Which has worked perfectly. We don't even think about it. Every month we put in the same amount. And right now we've also have managed to save up a little bit extra on that account. So we will always have enough if the electricity bill is a little bit more than we're thinking. The thing is with our electricity bill though, is that it's paid every quarter. So every three months and okay. we kind of have to estimate what it's going to be. But what's very interesting is that yes, prices are going up in the rest of the world. But since we have had such a mild winter, our electricity price is 30% cheaper than last year, only because we haven't used as much. <laughs> So for us, really, right now, it only depends on how bad the weather is and how cold it is. But of course, it can change. And I think we need to start thinking about that in our budget. But we, we also have because right now our power plant is run on coal that is mined on the island. So we are not affected by anything else in the world. But they are planning to start using diesel generator instead. Which, yeah, that's going to be very a very different number. That's a huge so, change. Right now working on that. Because diesel is expensive. If they diesel right now, that our prices would go up 40% for uh, like in general here for electricity. Wow. When, I, when I'm seeing all of these numbers, just think it without like 300 kroners is 30 uh, US dollars. A okay. thousand is a hundred. So you just need to take Divide it by zero 10. off at the okay. end. Just move the decimal one. It's basically there. Okay. The other account we have is Fellas, which means our joint account, which is where we only put food. 
Before we had bills there also, which turned out to be a shit show because we never knew how much money we had used for food. So that was one of the most important ones, just the everyday spending, separate that from everything else and just put it on its own accounts where you allocate how much money do we have for food? And we have a big food budget. We have 15, <laughs> well, we have 13,000 kroners there. That's so, a thousand. No, it's 1300 bucks. But the other account we have is our cabin account, which is now down to zero because we For spent food. it all, which is why we need to fill it up again. So right now we have a little bit extra money allocated for the cabin account. And if you have a house, this is to save a buffer for the house. So if something happens, you don't have to think that you need to take that money from somewhere else. You just take it from your cabin buffer account. Uh, to be fair, uh, they're living in Svalbard, so everything that is in the supermarket is basically exported goods, right? <laughs> or imported goods. I hope Buffer is the right name for this, but I'm going to continue using it, and otherwise it's going to be awkward if it's not the right name. It's called Buffet in Swedish, and I feel like a Buffer could be right. Now, let me Google it. Imagine if I'm here saying the wrong thing for this long. I would kick myself buffer meaning a bank account buffer is simply some extra cash in your checking account i can keep using it i'm gonna keep using buffer now you know what the word means to me <laughs> so we work a lot with buffers our focus 2023 is to build up our cabin buffer again so we're gonna put a lot of extra money in that now the first two months um, which is also good because we don't have a snowmobile season, so we don't have as much of expenses. So you see, you have to think about the like the year, when can you put a bit extra in. What is a snowmobile season? And allocate as much as you can, because that will just, you know, it's like I say, allocate spending money as well. It's okay to spend, but just make sure that you're spending money that you can spend. And then you, it, it's guilt-free. Yeah. Okay. So I would say spending money in my budget would be like 15%. I don't spend a lot. And the, the fact that I do try to save as much as possible, um, it, it kind of helps me in the long run. Because then I have, um, I have more money to spend in the future. So I kind of like I prioritize uh, all of my big debts first, right? Like mortgage, and then um, food is one of them, utilities, you know, kind of like that. Uh, but I don't spend a lot with clothes. You can see that I actually use the same sh shirt, <laughs> not the same one. I have like two or three that I use for videos um, just because I, I prefer kind of like narrowing. I'm a very, I'm kind of like a minimalist, you know, when it comes to spending. I do wash my shirts, by the way. I do. I wash them. <laughs> but if you notice, I, I kind of use the same ones over and over again. So we have 4,000 kroners monthly we're putting into our electricity. We are. We also have a paraffin stove and also gas for our house. And there's going to be different amounts here because we have... Um, we're putting different... Um, it's Yeah. Okay, so let's see. So I put a thousand in. We're putting sixteen hundred kroners for our cabin account. Uh, we are putting four hundred kroners for our dock. This is monthly, and then we pay for the cabin. You know the remote cabins we go to. It costs one hundred and fifty kroners monthly to be a part of that. So of course that's in the budget. That goes to the spending account. No, the bills account. Yeah, we so have our food, which goes on our joint so organized. account, called Felles, so that's 1300 kroners monthly. We have a mortgage on our house, so there we pay seven, eight, nine thousand kroners monthly. So that is almost a grand, and that is... I know a lot of people ask, like, how can you afford to buy this cabin? But we have a mortgage, just, you know, a regular morg mortgage that we pay off. Okay. And then we have cabin, our regular... Uh, cabin uh, buffer that we put money into is I put 2,000 a month he puts 1,000 then we have the boat account now this is something that this year we didn't have and I noticed that we need one the boat of course costs a lot of money but we need to save it up before so we don't have to take it out of pocket 
We need money for the service. We need money for the diesel. Um, we need money for just regular things. This is things super interesting because it's so very different from save, my spending. We realized that we need to save up about five grand till next summer. So now we're putting 4,000 kroners in total into our boat account. So we will have a good buffer in going into next season. Also another account I didn't have last year, a semester, semester, a vacation account. Before I would just kind of like take money out of my savings or anywhere and I'll be like, let's go on vacation. But I realized that's not the right way to do it. I'm just spending my savings. Now I need to build up my savings again. So we have a vacation savings and we've, we're just putting in thousand kroners each at the moment. Okay, then we have, I put money into the save, to the bills account for Grim because he's insured of course and that cost me 30 bucks monthly. Then Grim's food, also something that I forgot to put in the budget last year. 1200 kroners monthly service for my scooter my snowmobile and my car also new account this year the thing is um she's talking as if it was like very normal things like uh you know my dock my boat my um snowmobile <laughs> all of these things to me <laughs> is so intriguing because i mean what and I'm putting in a thousand kroners. I need to do one service on my car each year. La two years ago, it cost me 20,000, no, 26,000 kroners. <laughs> but it was one of those really expensive ones where you have to change the camera. And I mean, I was like, what? Oh, that see, that's where like money from my savings account went. Nobody told me my car was gonna cost me 2,500 bucks. Now that I've done this big service, every year service should be like 7,000 kroners. Wow. And the same for my snowmobile. But we have a big change with the snowmobile this year. We're going to be there soon and I'll talk about it. Okay, so our expenses here um, are as follows. Christopher's uh, 16,000 kroners and mine 23,000 kroners. So in total for just household expenses, and saving also don't forget that this is also hoarding accounts uh is forty thousand kroners 39 eight seven zero four thousand years dollars and we also have it divided up here because since we need to know at the start of every month where we're putting what money so i have it divided into each account now for savings we need to build up our savings account again so we are putting five thousand kroners each into our savings in norway which is just a regular savings account and then I'm also putting away 3,000 kroners uh, to send to my Swedish saving account because uh, I spent a little bit on that one. <laughs> so I need to build it up again. Yeah, you know. And it's because it's a really good credit card. So it has a lot of super good benefits, like when you go traveling and stuff. So I've just, you know, I've used it on every single plane ticket I've had because it covers me and Christopher. So that's why I need to, I can continue using it, but I just need to put money back into Sweden because soon it's going to, you know, have nothing left. Bro, I think she lost me with all the numbers, but um, I, I thought she was going to talk about like what the, the prices were, but man, this is a lot of um, expenses. <laughs> now, every year in January, we paid this one actually. Um, we pay our all of our fishaknia. What's that called? Uh, insurances. Okay. Um, we pay them all in one go, which means that we need to fork out sixty thousand kroners in total. I think what the fifty-six thousand four hundred and sixty kroners we need to pay in one bill at the start of January. But I think this is perfect because we saved a whole year and then we just pay it. So now this is the first year that we've saved for an entire year. But uh, you pay fifty thousand for insurance. Well, I think it. I mean, I mean, I hope it's worth it, right? So what we do is, but here it's gonna change for me. So we have our new boat, which costs us five hundred and forty-eight kroner per person. So monthly, it's a thousand ninety-six kroners for the boat, and that's an insurance. Then we have cabin insurance, which is four hundred and sixty-eight kroners. We pay fifty bucks for our cabin insured. Apparently it's not more, and that's like full insurance. My car costs 1,000 kroners good monthly, and Christopher's car costs 300 kroners monthly. Now, my snowmobile is 488, but I'm selling that snowmobile because I will be driving Lynx next, next year, 
which means that I'm borrowing a snowmobile from that company. So I'm selling my snowmobile and then we are, uh, I don't need the insurance for it. Like badminton, I need to pay a fee to pay, to pay a big part of the badminton club. Okay, leisure, well, right? My gym card, 200 kroners monthly. We also pay, the, there's so many things that I forgot last year to put in the budget, but I think it's because, I don't know, I just had made my first, you know, proper one for the cabin. So now this is so much more complete. We also pay for the land our cabin sits on. We don't own the land. Government owns okay. all land on Svalbard. So that's kind of like a ground rent, right? That's what normally we call it, ground rent. So we have to pay to rent it from them. And we pay 4,112 kroners. That's paid in one in October. So we put that's a lot. 171 kroners each monthly so let's just look at this so in his total we have all of this that's expenses this needs to be paid to somebody we also have all of this i am shocked right now <laughs> that one, and that makes up his total expenses then we have his total hoard which means that all of this money is just been it's going to be saved for future expenses. Then we have total savings, which is also a different thing. That's just putting in an account to save for the future. That's supposed to not be spent. Hoard is supposed to be spent. Savings, not supposed to be spent. That means that I think that we can do this. And that is his total out of his account. I think that's good to have also because we need to look at like how much money is is being spent now what people also said last time what about toiletries what about you know clothing and everything i never allocate that in a budget because i don't feel like i have anything that i have to spend monthly i don't have to buy anything to be honest yeah that's that's kind of like my mentality as well there's no fixed cost for clothing because i normally i don't need to buy clothing every month um you know you know i have everything that i need and maybe yes you know a face cream or whatever but what i use is any money outside of what's budgeted here is my spending money so for christopher this says what he has left of his wages is 9976 kroners which means that he can do whatever he wants with this th a thousand uh, dollars but i feel like this is pretty much it I, I i feel like it sounds complicated but it really isn't the key to this is to go through your expenses another thing people ask about our you know internet services like streaming i have it down here it's discovery plus it's hbo i have hey you but i haven't really what we've done is we've divided it so I have half of them and Christopher has half of them. We also canceled a bunch of them. That's I a have a tip. lot. Okay. Guys, I have so many. I need to cancel. I have Disney Plus, Netflix, um, Amazon Prime. I have um, Z5, which is an Indian thing. Um, I also have... Uh, I used to have Now TV. I canceled that one. Uh, I have Apple TV. Bro, I have so many things. And I have another Indian one, which is um, Disney Hotstar, which is a separate one as well. I have so many. I have Spotify. <laughs> I should really. But I use those for um, reaction videos as well, so. Very good tip. Go through your st streaming services and see what do you actually need. We had so many just because you kind of sign up and then you forget about it. So the thing, what that's we how they get you is Netflix, HBO and uh, Discovery Plus. That's because we got it on a, one of those deals where it costs us like four bucks a month or something. And I wanted to watch the Kardashians, <laughs> but now there's nothing on it that I want to watch. So I might just pause that for now. And then I have Hey You, which is also like 50 bucks a month. Is Hey You like a Norwegian um, service? Swedish. So it's like five dollars a month. That Swedish. Why Swedish? Also like 50 bucks a month Swedish. So it's like $5 a month. That one I use all the time. So that like that's like the one I have to save the most. Like, And then I have YouTube Premium, 
which I'm gonna move over to my business, I think. The, the only things that I can put on my business, since it's my company now, is um, the internet and my phone. So our phone bills have been moved because we're using them 99% for work or basically only for work. So thankfully that's an expense that I can take on my company. Otherwise I really don't have any other expenses I can take on my company. Um, what about rent? How does it work in Norway? Because here in the UK, like for example, I have this whole dedicated studio home office. So I believe I can put that into business expenses. I haven't done it yet because, um, well, YouTube hasn't, I don't want to get too much into detail, but it, it hasn't been a business, um, yet it hasn't become one yet uh, because not enough, um, earnings, but in any case, I think I could because there, there is a law that I can allocate parts of my rent or parts of my well, not rent because you know, I pay mortgage, but parts of my expenses as a business cost, business expense, even utility bills. I think something I need to check, but does Norway have anything like that? Let me know. Um, which is completely fine because, you know, with a good budget, it's all good. So I think that is our monthly budget for now. And I feel like it's for our expenses, let's see. Yeah, without the savings, our monthly cost for two people right now is 44,000. Let's divide that by two. So we have 22,000 kroners per person in expenses. I feel like that's very good. It's very good to also like to have a look at what your expenses are and like what would happen if this would go up 40%. That's kind of what we need to plan ahead for if they change like the, what's it called? The power plant here and our electricity prices go up 40%. Are we gonna be able to afford it? You know, right now it's a really mild winter so we can actually use those 5,000 kroners and save for the future. So we're just gonna keep them on that account. But it's kind of funny that we have to just wait and see what the weather is to know what our electricity bill is gonna be. And then we're also gonna have to buy more wood but that's also in here as it's under gas i don't think i would be able to so be so organized as well. if i had so many like bills thousand kroners or something three thousand five hundred to buy for almost the full years so that's okay but i think still that i can go in and nitpick a little bit more in this one and i think i'm gonna do that i might do an updated one after this year or like in the summer to see how this is going and if we've managed to build up our hoarding accounts because I feel like you can always go a little bit closer and deeper in on what your expenses are. But right now I feel like this is like it's worked really well. Yeah. I hope this was helpful or maybe just insightful. Is that a word? Yeah, just it was insightful. to get an idea of how you can do a budget and how it can look. And, you know, it doesn't have to be complicated at all. You really just need to write down what your expenses are and i know that it can be super demotivating or you know it is a little bit my field i mean come on oh okay but that's that's um i i have done my own um expenses right um i have done them i haven't done mine for 2023 but watching her do hers and seeing how much she is spending, of, of course, I don't have a boat or anything like that. I'm thinking about my finances and how things are going to be from now on, like 2023. And it, uh, I'm thinking ahead already, but still, wow, it's so expensive to live in Svalbard if, if you need all of that. But then again, if you remove the boat, then I think that would be maybe, you know, let's say 20% less even harder to do but that is i think when it's the most important but that was the this budget for 2023 i hope it's going to be a good start to the new year i feel like i'm already more you know on it i know what's i know what's happening <laughs> but yeah so 
Thank you so much for watching. I love you guys. 500K, wild, insane. I never thought that would be, the, the, this day would come. Amazing. I'm so thankful. Love you guys. Bye. I wonder if uh, she added like her YouTube earnings to that because, you know, um, it depends on, on like, it's, it's very interesting. Like she has 500k subscribers and she has a lot of views on her channel. So basically that would con contribute to, you know, earnings and it'd be interesting to see how her channel is doing. Um, mine is... I think it contributes like less than 10% of my actual earnings as a teacher. But hey, guys, I will see you on the next video. Um, let me know what you guys are, if you guys are looking forward to, you know, um, spending more <laughs> <laughs> in 2023 i think nobody looks forward to that but hopefully um you know inflation will go down and expenses will go down yeah. and um i can't even imagine how things will go if you know um if there's a 40 percent increase in in any of my bills <laughs> anyways guys uh it was entertaining thank you for watching this far with me and i'll see you in the next video Take care for now. Bye-bye. If you have any videos you want me to react to, let me know in the comments. Take care.